I think one of the women that really took the WNBA by storm as the year went on is with us here, McCallan. And I want to ask you about this first because you go from the beginning of the year and I knew you had a lot thrown at you and you could really see the wheels turning. And yet you look at where you are now, you're playing, I think, at an all-star level for the final month and a half. The confidence from the beginning to the end, it seemed like it's a totally different level. Is that accurate? Um, Yeah, it is for the most part. You know, when I first got into the league, it was kind of shaky. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I knew it was going to be physical night in, night out. And I just, you know, thought about the game too much. But in these last couple of games, I kind of just left it all out there, just played, just stopped overthinking. I think it really led me in the right direction for the future. Did, though, that, that very first game of the year, you hit the game-winning shot against New York. Did that do something for you? Did that kind of make you feel like, okay, you belong here? Oh, uh, yeah, most definitely, you know, a little spark in me and was like, okay, like, you know, you can do this. It's just basketball at the end of the day. So, I mean, it took a little while, but that moment, that was a turning point for me. What was the transition like as the year goes on? All of a sudden, you're in the starting lineup. You're getting major minutes. You're a major part of this offense. Uh, what was that like to experience it firsthand? Um, it was most definitely eye-opening, you know, that they trust me, a rookie, to come in, you know, and start and fill big position, like fill the big position, you know, just try to, you know, get this team up and coming. And I think that I did a good job. Um, being a rookie, you know, I put up unbelievable minutes. I rebound the ball at an unbelievable rate. So I think that all around, you know, I'm proud of myself. You are, by the way, <laughs> the new record holder for rebounds in a season, which is really remarkable <laughs> because for the first 10 plus games, you weren't playing big minutes. Mm -hmm. What did that mean? You got it at the very end there mm -hmm. on an offensive rebound um, to kind of put yourself in a spot like that in your number one to hold that record. What did it mean to you? Um, it means a lot. You know, I've broken a lot of records I mean, in the NCAA tournament. You know, I averaged 20 and 20. So, I mean, like, it's nothing just to go out and get a rebound. But doing it here amongst the best of the best, you know, it's a great experience to me. And, to break that, you know, that, that'll forever be close to my heart. You know how many quality bigs there are in this league. I think one of my favorite parts of this entire Fever season was watching as you progressed. There was a stretch where you went against Tina Charles and then went against Liz Cambage and um, Brittany Griner. And yet you did it with confidence. Do so you feel like you gained something from those experiences and, and playing like bigs and all-stars at that position? Most definitely, you know, night in, night out, you know, I just tried to limit their touches, you know, that must the best of the best. I was like, okay, if you can just compete, you know, and try to just limit them one or two possessions less than what they're getting, then, you know, you've done, you know, your part. And so, you know, I was limiting them. I was holding some people under their averages. So I was just like, yeah, like I can do it. As well as throughout the game, they were talking to me. They were like, you know, you're going to be special. And so that just built my confidence mid game. I'm just like, you know, I'm holding you to your lowest points here and you're talking to me about my confidence. So I was like, okay, that's great. And I was just, I was happy, honestly. That had to be a different level of confidence gaining because at, at you know, there were good bigs on the college level. You look at Kalani Brown, for example, but when you're going night in and night out against players that oftentimes are similar um, size as you are, uh, have been in the all-star game, th this is a different level of competition and to succeed against those type of players night in and night out. Um, it was most definitely great, you know, um, here it's like you have a big every night. It's not like some nights you have like a five player that's like, what, 5'10", right. so it's like everybody's over 6'3", and so it's just like, you know, you got to compete, like you can't, it's not going to be a night where you can just relax, well, oh, you know, I'll take tonight off. It's like, no, like at any point in time, like you can get embarrassed if you don't do your work early, and that's what coach always says, like do your work early, you know, be one step ahead of your defender. Well, you and Natalie Achan will have very different games, but yet it seemed like she was pretty significant in your growth and development in this year. Is that accurate? Yes, that is for say. Um, Nat, you know, she she's the coach on the floor. You know, right. you have coaches on the time, and that's the coach on the floor. She tells you, you know, every little thing where you need to be. You know, how to defend or how to you know get a bucket. And so it was kind of just like, I needed that common effect. It was like, okay, well, I did it this way. She's like, okay, we'll do it this way. I do it her way and it worked every time. So I was just thankful for her all season for just helping me mid game. <laughs> it seemed like the rookies pretty quickly formed a strong relationship. Mm -hmm. What was uh, it like to have a group that everybody's coming in, you know each other from the college game and yet you meshed really quickly, it seemed. Um, it was great, KB and P, you know, I just, I love them. You know, they're like my sister. Well, everyone's like my sister, but those are like my little sisters. I mean, we did everything together. I mean, it was pretty special, the, the bond that we form, formed so quickly. I, was, I wasn't shocked, but at the same time, it was just like, okay, like, yeah. I
Okay, speaking of shocking, it might be a little bit of a culture shock to go over and play basketball in China. What are your thoughts as you turn the page to your WNBA offseason? Um, it's going to be different for the most part. Um, I think that I can get through it. If I can get through Big Shaper's out, workout out in Starkville, I feel like I can get through anywhere. And so I think that has prepared me, as well as here has prepared me to go out and conquer over in China. When time comes uh, to get back here to Indianapolis, what do you sense year two might be like because you finished the season so strong and you come in, I think, with a confidence level and a, and a knowledge of what it's like to play in the WNBA off of what was a really successful back half of the season for you? I don't think I expect anything less than what I've been given these last few games. I don't think there'll be a drop off. I think there'll be an increase. I um, most definitely will pick up the defensive intensity as well as protecting the paint as well as protecting the rim. I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to work out on my offense during the offseason. I think I'll get better. Maybe you've seen a little stretch five. That's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. So maybe stepping out a little <laughs> bit. This is you. You're you were a good free throw shooter in college. Your free throw shooting got better as the year went on. Um, but it, it seems to me, I, I watch you shoot from that um, distance, 16 feet and out. You've got good form. It seems like that could be potentially an area where your game even extends to. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I used to shoot uh, back in college, but now I just like kind of got away from that because I was overthinking the game. But I'll be back to my old self in year two. Year okay. two might mean, too, a chance to play with uh, Tori again, Victoria Vivians. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for Tori to be coming back. You know, we were the dynamic duo, so yeah. hopefully we can get it back fired up. Well, you see your Mississippi State fans. I mean, in, in terms of, like, diehard fans, mm -hmm. I'm not sure there are many, if any, better than that. <laughs> Was it fun to have them along for the ride with you, along with the Fever fans this year? Most definitely. You know, Mississippi State family, we travel deep, you know. So well, anywhere we go, we're going to see somebody in Mississippi State shirt on. I think you, you had a lot of fans as you came into the fever, but I think you gained a lot this year mm -hmm. as well. Um, this will be the last time we'll get the chance to talk to you for a little bit. So any final thoughts to the fever fans who supported you this season? Uh, to the fans, I just want to say, you know, thank you for always coming and packing out Bankers Life Field House and, you know, screaming high and, you know, getting all our opponents, you know, distracted. And I just want to say thank you. Huh? See you at Inca Field House. Well, I think the anticipation is high for year two for you. Good luck uh, out in China, and congrats on what was a, a really great <laughs> rookie season for you. Thank you so much.